Microsoft has expanded the Surface lineup to its cheapest potential yet, as well as finally have a player in the Chromebook slash budget iPad market, which previously Surface had no player in. Now they have a budget device known as the Surface Go. And you can stop asking about it, okay? Let's let's get this over with. Terribly exciting. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's very Microsoft-esque of a product for them to release. So let's dive in. My thoughts on the Microsoft Surface lineup has always been like, they can do some cool things, but I feel like every product kind of overlaps with a different product they sell a little bit too much, both in price and in specs. And they always seem to kind of miss the market by a little bit. Like, I think the Surface product that hits the market intentionally, the best is the Surface Pro. Like, pretty fairly priced, though it doesn't come with a keyboard, though you probably should get a keyboard with it because I tried using the Surface Pro 4 with just the display and just tablet mode, and it was not a good experience. And on top of that, the Surface Go device ships with Windows 10 S. Yes, it is free for you to switch to the regular Windows 10 Home Edition, but yeah, out of the box, this thing ships with Windows 10 S, and I'd be surprised if there's people out there who would love it if just the Microsoft Store apps worked on their device. Maybe some people are okay with that, but this device is very competitively priced at $400. Much, much cheaper than the starting price of the new Surface Pro, which is at $800. Neither device, though, shipping with a keyboard or trackpad. Even though with Windows 10, asking someone to use it exclusively as a tablet is, let's just call it a bad idea. The Windows Store may be growing in size and maybe getting some more apps that are optimized for it, including Apple's iTunes, which I believe gets more updates on Windows than it does on a Mac. But this is kind of my complaint about the Surface Go device. So if you're looking for just someone to talk about what it is and how it stands as a product, basically very affordable Surface device made of the same magnesium material that the other Surface Pro devices are made of. It's really supposed to be a long-awaited sequel to the regular Surface 3 that Microsoft used to sell a long time ago. Surface Go is supposed to be portable. It's a 10-inch laptop, 1800 by 1200 resolution display with an aspect ratio of 3 by 2. It's got some okay CPUs in it, but you know, nothing you should be terribly excited for for a $400 device with storage options between 64 gigs and 128. Expandable storage, of course. Charges via USB-C, but also supports the Surface Dock connector. Of course, has a headphone jack. And of course, if you couldn't tell, this device is directly supposed to be competing with Apple's new 2018 iPad, as well as Chromebooks, given there are Windows laptops out there with the price of a Chromebook, but none of them were directly from Microsoft, so now we have that flagship device. Microsoft also has said that Cellular is coming to the Surface Go later this year, which I think is really cool, the fact that Microsoft will be able to spy on you and update Windows 10, no matter where you are in the world or how much your data plan is. There's a little bit of truth to that, but for the most part, it's a joke. I really wish the 2018 iPad had a Cellular option. I don't think it does. I'm guessing it's just not too popular, but it is really neat that the Surface devices are able to equip cellular for users who care about that type of thing. Though once again, I do have the same complaint about the Surface Go that I do about the 2018 iPad. If you're new to this channel and you don't know my thoughts on Apple's new iPad this year, I find it extremely hypocritical and silly when devices that are aimed at being budget, you know, in the $300 to $400 range, yet the primary accessories they were built to support cost $100 plus. I didn't like the 2018 iPad iPad for that. It was like, here's this cheap $330 iPad that is now equipped with Apple Pencil support and the Apple Pencil costs $100 for you. That just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, we're budget, but we want you to buy premium accessories. The Surface Go device kind of expands on that and makes it even worse because this does not ship with a Surface Pen. This is $400 and that's it. It's just the tablet. No keyboard, no mouse. Though they did also announce a Microsoft branded mouse that's only $36 that I'm proud of and I might just get one for the heck of having it, but all the rest of the accessories cost a lot. The pen is $100. The cover is $100. Some keyboards that you can buy for the Surface Go are over $100, approaching into the $130 range, depending on which color you get, because that chrome color, you know, just costs that extra 30 bucks. So it's already a little bit priced higher than an iPad. $400 is still budget, I'll give it that. It's by no means an expensive device, but iPad's already winning in the price market here. Also bring up that while I don't care about this iPad very much and I don't think Apple needed to release it, it does have a higher resolution. At 2048 by 15 something something, it's definitely a higher resolution than that of the Surface Go device. Even though display wise, these things are near the same. iPad being 9.7 inches, this being 10 inches, they're pretty close in display size though. In terms of design, the Surface Go definitely has some thicker bezels. In 2018, which has primarily been about removing bezels, but I suppose that's not the purpose of this device. It's not really supposed to look cool. It's supposed to be functional. 
exceptional. It's just, if you care about aesthetics and it is a fashion show between the iPad and the Surface Go and you're not sure which one to get, the iPad may win you over with more color options that don't cost more. The product itself is a lot cheaper and iOS on the 2018 iPad is actually optimized for it. You do not have to buy a $100 keyboard and trackpad in order for the iPad to be completely utilized. You can totally use the iPad in all its glory in everything it was designed to do out of the box. You don't need to buy another $100 accessory, whereas Surface Go device, I really don't think many people are going to be able to buy that with no keyboard, no mouse, and just use it as is, because tablet mode with Windows 10s is just really not ideal. I'm sure it's getting better, but it really does not compare to the app support and the vast arrangement of apps we already have on iOS iPad. So like I said about the Surface lineup, it always kind of confuses me about what they're aiming for. So it's like Surface Studio is aiming for desktop artists who also like to draw but definitely don't care about their ports because that giant display covers the whole thing up. You complaining about the iMac Pro's vase amount? Yeah, Surface Studio, that's not even a thing. With the Surface Book, it's really just a Surface Pro that keeps the keyboard and trackpad included, but its tech specs and price points are really very overlapped with the Surface Pro. And then there's the Surface Laptop, which is like, we have a touchscreen and Windows 10 can be used as a tablet, but also here's a laptop that can't even fold around backwards. So really just use the desktop version of Windows 10 with the Surface Laptop. So it makes perfect sense that Microsoft would release something like the Surface Go. It's just kind of, I mean, you're running an operating system built for third-party apps and third-party accessories, but you boot it up with Windows 10 S, so you don't want us to use that. So it's essentially a $400 device asking you to use Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and Excel, but for all those to really work to their true potential, go ahead and spend another $100 on that beautiful type cover and trackpad, which I'm sure when you get all the accessories for the Surface Go, it may be a fairly decent experience. No, the specs are not great on it, but this was not intended to be a high spec device. This was intended to be good enough for most people, though I think companies when making budget devices need to include everything the user needs in the single purchase. Not say $400 opens the door, but in order to walk through the door, you need to spend another $100 on the pen and $100 on the keyboard. Just in the checkout process of the Surface Go, you could very quickly start breaching into the $600 zone, which really kind of defeats the purpose of this thing being budget, because then you're not even that far away from just being able to afford a Surface Pro. I haven't tried a Surface device in a while, so I'm actually considering reviewing the Surface Go. If you guys want me to unbox it and review it, I'll happily try one out. Probably not to keep, but at least do a review for on this channel because last time I reviewed a Surface device was in the attic and I did not have an enjoyable experience with it. I can just tell that Windows 10 is not built for tablet support. It can do it. It's just not really optimized for it. Now I could tell anytime I use a Surface device that it really wanted me to connect a keyboard and mouse at all times. But of course I could be wrong. A lot of things may have changed by now. So if you have thoughts on the Surface Go that I didn't talk about here, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And for the record, I'm not crazy about the Surface Go, but I'm also not crazy about Chromebooks or the 2018 iPad. So it's this genre of product that confuses me overall. It feels like tech companies say, let's not make any profit on the starter device, but make all the profit on the expensive accessories you'll have to buy to justify this budget product, which just seems hypocritical to me. And to all the people asking me to react to Dave Lee's I Hate Apple video, I watched it. Argument was not even really there. I don't want to succumb to the whole clickbait, like me reacting to Dave Lee video. So I'm not gonna make a response video about it because he was basically upset that Adobe doesn't optimize their apps for Macs, given we know that Final Cut with Mac OS is able to handle high intensive editing on very low spec machines. So you guys know also that I was totally upset that Apple didn't update their CPUs and GPUs at WWDC. They definitely could have, they definitely should have, but that's the reason you're going to hate all of Apple is because they're running late. Like they're going to adopt the new CPUs. They're just being slow about it, but I would still say Mac OS has the advantage over PCs because I can edit 4K video on a 12 inch MacBook. Whereas editing 4K video on something like the Surface Go, there's no Microsoft built optimized editing app that is going to rival that of Final Cut. Meaning it is possible to edit high end stuff on MacBooks and iMacs, yet Adobe just doesn't like optimizing their apps for Mac OS devices. I know I used to be a giant Adobe Premiere fan and I've used Premiere on both the iMac Pro and my MacBook Pro and Adobe just doesn't really care that much. Adobe doesn't want to be on the Mac App Store or the Windows Store. They don't want to optimize for anyone. They just want to be their own app and that results in a sacrifice in performance and I don't think it makes sense to hate all of Apple because one third party is not optimizing their apps correctly. Yes, it would definitely help if there were 8th gen CPUs and faster GPUs. I agree. 
agree. That is coming later this year, and I agree they are running late on it. But the argument that because Premiere exports slowly on my Mac, therefore Apple is a bad company, I think you should be more mad at Adobe than Apple. If you care that much about export times and you can't stand slower exporting, then don't use Premiere. Adobe is also a bit more of a money hoard. They don't have a set price on their products. You have to pay $30 a month forever. Apple's Final Cut Pro, you buy once and you're set for life with updates for life. A lot of people kind of prefer that. There's a lot of advantages to Final Cut Pro. That's why a lot of big YouTubers like MKBHD use Final Cut Pro. And I apologize for tacking on my little Dave Lee response here, but I didn't want to just get a bunch of views over the fact that I put him in the thumbnail. I don't want to do more drama like that on YouTube. And his argument for like, I didn't get Apple Care, but I dropped my iPhone and it broke, is not exclusive to Apple. You can drop any number of glass-backed phones and repairing them is going to cost a lot. If you don't like that, don't buy glass-backed phones. You're not required to. Or if you think that you are a little clumsy with your phone, just get Apple Care. People are pushing for iPhones to have more features and people complain when they don't have new features, so they add them, but that comes at the cost of fragility, which just means take care of your phone or get Apple Care. It's as simple as that. I don't think that deserved a whole video. I'm sure plenty of you disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below as well. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.